Well, hello and welcome to Create Talks. Woo! We are live, so if you have any questions, please let us know. I am with my dear friend, Lynn Rosenthal. She is just a gem. I wish that you could just spend time with her. She just is such a prophetic voice in our art community and is one of our coaches here on Create Academy. She just is the bomb. But we are today, we're celebrating victories, we're celebrating breakthroughs and going into greater levels uh, of, of just seeing what God does because we're there in the season and we want all that God has for us and how to hear from the Holy Spirit. And so Lynn, welcome. We're Thank so you. glad you're here. Thank Yay. you so much. Yay. So uh, tell us a little bit about like this breakthrough that happened with your horse. Mm -hmm. So she's an avid horse lover, let me mm -hmm. tell you. And what happened this spring and mm -hmm. what God did. Right on. Thank you so much for inviting me on the show. So glad you're so here. So excited to be here. <laughs> yeah, I love horses. I have all my life. And um, I we had a horse for my daughter, my youngest daughter, Avery. And we shared the horse. He was a Western Pleasure Arabian show horse. And he was like a gray with speckles. His name was Greystone. And we had him for about seven years. And we just love this horse. He's beautiful. He's kind. He was amazing. And, you know, science has proven that a horse's heartbeat will align with a human's heartbeat. Well, he definitely aligned with um, Avery and I. And he passed away this um, February 3rd. It was very traumatic and it was sudden and acute. And it broke our hearts. Um, we'd seen so many miracles how God had healed him before different illnesses happen. And so, you know, my faith got rocked because I was like questioning again. And so I had to work through that piece with God and just go into a deep place, both of Avery and I, into a deep place of mourning. And what did that look like with Holy Spirit? Yeah. And that was a huge transition for us. And now Avery is how old? 16 or 17? She's 16 right now. She's 16. And so for her, this was like her horse that she grew up with that she mm -hmm. showed. So this was like a part of, uh, almost like losing a family member for both of them. And I remember just walking and praying with you and just knowing like you have to grieve. I mean, part of the process in all of our lives is like we have to be able to grieve. We have to be able to work out the things that have happened in our life. And we do it through creativity and we do it through just sharing our hearts. Mm -hmm. But but then there was a miracle that happened. And this just happened around Easter time. and. Yeah. Share about what happened yeah. and how God redeemed everything. He did. Um, <laughs> God is so awesome. I love him so much. Um, yeah, it's so true. I don't know. It's so great. I woke up every morning after my horse died, uh, our horse died, and I would, just, I would just wake up and go, God, my horse died. Did you know that? <laughs> and hear yes. He's with me in heaven. And I go every day, God, I really want my horse back. I know it's not possible, but I want him back. Can Come I get on. my knife back? Bill has that sermon about getting your <laughs> totally. knife back. I'm like, I want my knife back. And um, gosh, I never thought I'd cry so much. But I just cry and cry and cry. And um, every single day for two months, God, I, I want my horse back. And then um, I was on YouTube looking at videos and, um, you know, browsing through different horses. We had bought a pasture pet for my, we had three horses total, but we had had a little horse that was Greystone's buddy. He was very Aww. lonely without Greystone. So we bought a little cute pasture mare to keep him company. And I'm like... I don't need another horse. And I've got two. I'm fine. And we're doing okay. And then I noticed this video of a horse. And I was like, wait a minute. I looked again. I just had such a sense about this horse. And so I listened to Holy Spirit. And I drove down to Sacramento, California. And it was like walking up and seeing my horse, but only red. <laughs> and I said to the trainer there, the horse was for sale. I said, hey, do you have the pedigree of this horse by any chance? And she did on her phone, which is, again, surprising. Most yeah. people don't have the pedigree of the horse right on their phone like that, exactly. but she did. And it ends up this, this horse is Greystone, the one that I lost. It's his cousin. If the same bloodline. Come on. And he was every single thing. He was, a, he was like a five-year-old baby. He was in training. He was much taller than Greystone. He was red, not gray. There were so many things that I had like in my brain, my wish list with God. And I'm, and then the funny thing too was I had painted a painting back at the Open Heavens Conference, you know, the previous sept October. And I sold that painting for the exact price that this new horse was. 
The same it, price. It and it was just, a three horses, too. This is so crazy. And look at this painting that you did. This is beautiful. Share about this painting and yeah. why it's all interconnected. Yeah, God is so faithful. Um, well, you know, when I was in the grieving process, the prophetic conference was two weeks after Grace Owen had died. And I was like, I don't even want to paint God. And, you know, we have been, done so much work with Create to Be Free. I really felt like getting on stage and doing the work that we learn in Create to Be Free is go with God, ask for the colors, ask for the image, and release what's in your heart to God. And that's what Zoe and I did. I said, we're going to do a horse that's going to be a tribute to Greystone. It's going to be just a picture of beauty. Like if you could think of Greystone, all I could think about was his beauty. And I wanted to capture that in this painting. So wow. Zoe and I did this together. Yeah. And then it, it looks, and I was prophesying to myself. So I was <laughs> totally. healing. I love it. And I love the word free. This is free forever. And just that whole thing of, of where, where your horse is now, because your yeah. horse was battling cancer. And now it's like, but now you got his relative. His this relative. Is so cool. And I have three horses now. Yeah, so there's three here. So I was prophesying. I didn't even know it. Prophesying the whole thing. So, God. by the way, um, we have a guest joining us, Sonia. Sonia Brownless says her and her daughter lost their horse and needs to grieve too. So, Sonia, we just mm -hmm. like, if just look at this picture. We just ask that you would do something in her heart and in her daughter's heart of healing. Mm -hmm. It's no coincidence that you're there and you're watching this. And we bless you, Sonia, yeah. and we pray that we that you would feel God's comfort and that you would like say, I want my knife back. You call out to him because he's going to answer you. So and please let us know the victory and we're there for you. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Um, it's amazing. Now, all of your kids, this is another chance. So we're talking about transition things that happened. All of your kids graduated last year. That's crazy. Yep. So Jack and Avery both graduated from high school. That's right. They and, just did. And then, and then Zoe, who is her older daughter, just graduated from our school of ministry with me underneath the third year program here at mm -hmm. school of ministry. So what the heck? Well, it must have <laughs> been crazy for you. You have here, you have three kids gone. Um, share about how you dealt with that through creativity. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I spent a lot of time with God just dreaming with him and saying, "Work. I want to go to the next level. My kids are graduating in life right. and I want to not sit still. I want to push into something in God's heart. And I love color. And so I decided to encourage them to go after their dreams. Mm. And they love photography. All three of them do. And mm -hmm. they were going deeper into creativity personally, like my two younger children who graduated from high school, they they went off to Iceland on a photography trip. Go figure, now the way they went out and they, they didn't they like have tents, didn't they sleep right they, out? They went camping. And they, they went camping. These are like what, a 16 year old, an 18 year old, mm -hmm. and a friend. That's crazy for two yeah. weeks. Yeah, and they went all over Iceland, took like a thousand pictures, and it's gonna, it's just launching their creativity yeah. because of the beauty of nature. And then Zoe is just being launched into her, like a fine arts degree, so she's just going for it. Oh my gosh. Very excited about that. And for me, you know, with my babies, I've, I've been home with my babies all this time, and I love them so much, and I'm so proud of them. And I was like, God, I know you love me, and you're proud of me too. So this is my transition of... I'm all grown up now, God. What do you want to do? And Come I just on. started painting these little paintings every day for like a minute, just playing with color, just having fun, just playing with God. That's yeah. amazing. Come on. I'm doing the same thing. I'm on a 40-day challenge myself. I'm just creating art for people every day. And it's just like amazing the stories that happen because we need to steward our gift. Yeah. It's like creativity continues to grow inside of us if we activate if we go after that what exactly what you're mm -hmm. talking about because it's it's time for everyone to feel that so if you um i think i'm speaking to some people out there <laughs> if you've gone through a hard time guess what you can create and you can get things out whether it's poetry whether it's a song mm -hmm. whatever it is and bless people but but speaking of kids you know we also just launched create for kids yeah. yay which yay. is online which you can look at uh, on you know, Create Academy, Teresa Dedman. But I, it's crazy because you were able to like see your daughter mm -hmm. and your kids grow for about ten years just by teaching them about the power mm -hmm. of the prophetic. And we have we have the interview in Create for Kids as well from 
from Zoe and from also Lynn, which you just need to get. But how has this transformed your family and your kids, like going after the power of linking in with co-creating with God? How has that Mm -hmm. changed your family dynamic? Yeah, that's such a great question, too. I love this question. I love the video. Yeah, Um, we had so much fun. We did. Well, kids are are curious, and I'm curious, and we were asking God questions. But instead of listening for the answer in traditional talking way, God speaks in pictures, and He speaks through nature. So I was like, let's let's create something either with clay or with Play-Doh or with art, you know, watercolors or crayons, anything we could get our hands on. Sometimes we went outside and got leaves and sticks and made pictures with acorns. <laughs> Come on. Just something. And yeah. they would all three, you know, my three kids would just align their hearts with God and they were getting answers. And they, they saw us moving to Reading long before we ever thought about moving to Reading. And they drew it. They drew our house. <laughs> oh and my gosh. It was just so much fun. And that's carried with them, you know, to this day, you know, now that they're grown up, they ask God questions and they look for unique answers and they are very sensitive and open to the Holy Spirit and they love art. They love creativity and they, they don't see a divide between business and creativity. Like if you do art, you're also business minded and there's creativity in business. And so I think it just opened their hearts up to receive more from God. It's almost like they didn't, so many I mean, in our generation, Mm -hmm. it's like we compartmentalized, oh, there's art, and that can be a business side, Mm -hmm. or there's ministry, and there's a relationship with God. And that's not what God thinks at all. Because from what happens is like as we get touched by Jesus, as we open up our sanctified imagination, He fills it for a reason. And creativity is a way of showing us what He's saying. And it's so powerful. And so I think that I think that this course is so important because we have to help our kids mm-hmm. because the educational system tells them not to think and not to be creative. It says we only want one answer. <laughs> Everything is black and white. And arts is always the last thing on any any person's if you go into any educational system, it's the last thing on the agenda of what to teach. When it should be the first because We want people to be creative. We have to then inspire them to create. And so you change that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, look at the the course. We really want you Mm -hmm. to take your kids to the next level. Create for kids in the Create Academy. But, Lynn, you brought in some artwork to prophesy. I did. Oh, my gosh. So if you're in transition or like what you just talked about, Sonia, you're going through a difficult time. We really felt like there were people that needed to hear today about the power that God wants to speak to you today through color, through images, to see you get set free. That's so, right. So, Lynn. Yeah. yeah, I brought these two pieces in. Um, they can see them. So again, these are short paintings. I think I spent five minutes on each one, just playing with color with God. And I was really, when I was thinking about loss and transition and how God will multiply, He'll comfort you. And then he'll, you'll, if you press in with him and hear his heart, he will speak to you and he will take you through the season of winter. Because for me, grieving is like winter. It's yeah. dark, it's sad, it's cold, you feel alone. Um, there's no color. You know, I didn't see color. I felt you know, almost depressed, but I knew it was grief. It wasn't depression. Um, and that's okay too if you do feel, you know, like depression's hitting you. Just yeah. know that it'll move, you'll move through it. And I really felt like coming out of that, you step into springtime with God. And springtime Mm. with God is knowing his fullness and his comfort and his promises and his promises that he'll never leave you. And that he takes each tear and he holds it in his hands. And then he has a special jar and vial, beautiful vase in heaven where he puts each precious tear in. And he carries the memory of each tear. So just know how much, how the depths of your soul, how he goes in there with you. And I felt like this just speaks to the promises of the rainbow, the promise that... God is going to restore back what the enemy's stolen, what the enemy's robbed you from. Come on. And there's healing and there's joy. And joy to me looks like color. And I needed joy to be restored back to me badly. And he did. But he held my tears first. So that's so I just, huge. I just pray that as you look at these paintings and feel the life in them, that God will meet you exactly where you are, that each memory will be held in tandem, the traumas will be released from you. And that God would speak to you about how he sees you, how you're going through this, and what he's going to bring to you in exchange for what you've survived. 
You know, mm -hmm. well, that's so good because transition is something that you're walking into a different place than you were before. You're seeing things differently than you did before, but there's something new that then God can bring you. We kind of have to let go and we have to let him in. So we're asking you just to take some time in the next couple days, just to take, be alone with God and just say, God, what do you think of me? How do you love me? What's going on? And then create whatever he shows you because transition can be a good thing because it can lead to a greater understanding of comfort, mm -hmm. of compassion, of what God has for you. So we just release healing to you. And we ask, Father, that the colors wow, that are in these paintings and that they would speak to them and that there is new life happening even if they don't see it yet. So mm -hmm. transition is important and we bless you with that. Mm -hmm. So, wow, Lynn, thank awesome. you so much for coming and for rocking us. And thank you for the testimony about what happened in your horse. Wow. Yeah, thank so you. we just want to say continue to go after the breakthrough that's in you and continue to go after what God has and walk in the fullness. Mm -hmm. Don't ever settle for just staying in a place of hopelessness, but let God lead you through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lynn, thank you so much for joining. Yeah. You're amazing. Thank you so much for having me. And have a, have a great week. And remember, you're born to create. So yeah. let's get going. <laughs>